I'm here to visit the grave of a WW2 veteran that flew a B-25 bomber plane in the war. We are here at a historical cemetery and church. This church behind me that you see is the first church built here in Tazewell County, Virginia. And the veteran is buried in this cemetery right up here on top of the hill. So we're gonna go visit his grave. And there is a letter that I have right here in my pocket, right here, that he wrote telling a little bit of his basic training and his time in the war and a little bit of his personal life. But we're going to wait and read the letter that he wrote at his headstone. And I have a few things to place on his headstone when we get there. So let's go take a look at this old church and look and just see how old it is. Wait till you see what's around back. I've already been around back and checked and I was like, wow, that really shows the age of this place. And they still use it today. So let's go on and check it out. This church is very old. It was built in 1875. Its structure is just a plain rectangular frame, as you can see as we walk down the side of it. Now, the building has two bays with a steep gable roof, as you can see. And it originally served multiple denominations as a union church, but has exclusively served the Lutheran denomination in modern times. The community was an outpost for German immigrants who settled in the backcountry frontier in the late 18th century. The cemetery was founded in 1827 and contains a notable collection of sandstone Germanic gravestones, as you can see up through there. It was listed on the National Registry of Historical Places in 1979. Now, as we come around the back of the building, I want you to check this out. This is what I'm talking about. It will show its age. This church still uses an outhouse. This is the women's side. But another interesting fact about this land up here. Burke's Garden sits on top of a mountain that had collapsed on itself over time. And the reason it collapsed on itself, it collapsed inward. It had a lot of tunnel systems in the mountain decades and decades ago. So what had happened, like I said, it caved in on itself, it settled, and people came, well, people came here and began to settle. Uh, the original settlers here was James Patton, and James Burke. Now, James Burke, a, inter a little interesting fact about how it got its name Burke's Garden is James Burke was making dinner one night. He, he was cutting potatoes and he was throwing his peels out on the ground and he just left them there. Well, I think maybe come winter season, they all loaded up and left, so they went away for a while, and then they came back, I guess, during the spring. And when they came back, they noticed where they settled at when they came the first time, there was a little garden of potatoes growing there. And James Patton looked at everyone, and they started laughing. He said, that's Burke's garden. He said, we ought to call this place Burke's Garden. So that's how it got its name. It just kind of stuck. And it was really intended to be a joke. But now the joke turned into a permanent thing. And when I get to the top of that hill up there, I'll let you look around. All the way around in like a circle. We're like sitting in a bowl here on top of this mountain. And you can tell when I get to the top because you can see the ridge line all the way around. And it said if this mountain was still standing today and hadn't collapsed on itself, that it would be the biggest mountain in Virginia. And right here it is. This is Captain Griever, the WW2 veteran from World War II. As you can see right there, it says Edgar Phillip. March 19th, 1919 to January 10th, 2011. He was 
part of the U.S. 10th Air Force and WW2. Now, I learned something about that. They put Air Force, but before Air Force, there was none. It was called the Air Corps. And this is his wife, Lucy uh, Garrett Gillespie. She was born February 20th, 1919, and she died August 25th, 2009. Now, I want to read the letter that was wrote to a guy that was looking for some information about that infantry. So, so let's look at this letter and see exactly a little insight on his life. Now, this letter is dated April 5th, 1993. And it reads, Dear Paul, this is in reply to your letter on February 8th. Please forgive me for the delay in responding. I am greatly impressed by your effort to get information on the cadets who trained at Douglas, Georgia during WW2. I regret that I am unable to furnish any information on my class of 42J. Any orders that I might have had from Maxwell Field have long since disappeared. However, I do have a yearbook from Shaw Field, Sumter, South Carolina, where I had basic training and will try to reproduce some of the pictures with names, which I am sure include many of the cadets from Douglas. After primary and basic training, I went to Albany, Georgia for advanced training in single and twin engine aircraft. From there, I went to Columbia, South Carolina for transitions to B-25s. This training was completed in the spring of 1943 and I was then ordered, along with a crew of five in a brand new B-25, to proceed to the CBI theater. There I flew about 60 combat missions over Burma, harassing the Japanese. This included two flights over the hump into China. I was then assigned to 10th Air Force headquarters flying a B-25 used by the CG and his staff for liaison purposes. I was the assigned I was then assigned as liaison officer with the British forces in Calcutta, India. And during this assignment, I acted as one of the three ASDAs camp to the governor of Bengal, who at the time was Han Richard G. Casey, an Australian who had been at one time Australian minister to the U.S. I returned to the States in June 1945 and was discharged with the rank of captain in December of 1945. Lucy and I were married in 1950, and we have three daughters who are all married and have a total of four grandchildren. I have always lived here on our farm except the time I was away at school, at Roanoke College, Salem, Virginia, and the time I spent in the service. Our children are the sixth generation who have lived on this farm. In addition to farming, I have been in the insurance business, and in 1957, I was appointed the Office of County Treasurer. After completing the unexpired term of my predecessor, I was elected to this office for six four-year terms. I retired in 1983. When I found this letter online, I was like, that is super interesting. That gives me a little insight on who this guy was and what all he did for our country. So... Got a few things, like I said, I want to put on his grave, and then I want to show you around the ridge line to show you that we're sitting in a hole. Imagine a mountain like this, just caving in on itself. That's what happened here. But let's head over here, and let's put these gifts on his headstone. I brought him a rose. And I also got him this little American flag solar light because in my opinion this man Edgar Griever Captain Edgar Griever was a light to the nation in our darkest time so we'll let that little light shine for this hero Captain Edgar Griever I'd like to thank you for your service sir It's so beautiful up here. If I had a piece of land up here, 
I'd keep it. Never get rid of it. It's quiet. It's peaceful. Right now it's windy. It's rainy. But hey, I don't care. I came to see a war veteran and to bring y'all along with me so we could pay our respects. As you can see behind me, see that ridge line? It goes all the way around. You can't see on that side. Look, there it is. All the way. Some of them weren't so fortunate to make it back from the war. But I think every one of them that gave their life to protect this country and to protect this land and to give us what we have today, the freedom here we have today, we owe them a lot of respect. It takes courage. It takes strength to go through something like that. It takes a real man or a real woman because a lot of women fight in the army today and in the military it takes somebody of real courage and strength to go fight for their country and we are forever indebted to their services so thank you veterans thank you for all that you've done for us and thank you to all the future veterans for doing what you're doing for us right now and until next time, I'll see y'all on another episode of Destination Graveyard.